Today on Let's Play Bedrock, I'm gonna build a general mob farm inside of the world's largest Yoshi egg. The Super Mario Bros. movie is only a few months away at the time of this recording, and I could not be more excited. And I'm equally as excited to see how this whole area is going to transform over the next couple of months. But before we start building, there are some things I need to take care of. I need a bunch of supplies for today's build, and they're all here. So we're back in the jungle. I'm going to take all of the wool that I've collected since episode two, and I'm not sure that this is going to be enough. I'm not even sure if you can tell by the thumbnail how big this build's actually gonna be, but it's huge. Okay, so now, hear me out, Mojang. Armor trims are coming. How about shulker trims? Maybe we click on the top of the shulker box with a die, and we get one color, and we click on the bottom of the shulker box with another die, and we get another color. Come on! That would be so good! Hashtag shulker box trims. Let's make it happen. But I guess just a plain green box will do for now. I thought I was way more prepared for this build, but turns out I'm not prepared at all. All this stuff took me so long to get together. These bottom three shulkers are all of the wool. And then look at this, cobblestone. We've been using so much of the stuff in these builds, whether it's cobblestone or smelting it into regular stone, I don't have much left. So I'm probably gonna have to go mining. I've got my redstone materials, I think pretty much situated. I've got all sorts of torches and campfires and signs for the mob farm build. And I've got some food because we're gonna get hungry. But aside from that cobblestone, I I still have a lot of stuff to get. It is a good thing there is a coral reef near my house. We're gonna take all of these coral fans, as many as we can find. I'm gonna try to leave the rest of it untouched for a while, cause it's so pretty. Ah, okay, oh, get up for air, thank you. While I'm mining coral, I need to be on the lookout for these guys. Hopefully one of them will see fit to give me a trident. Oh my goodness, am I just gonna drown? If I was really smart, I would get some water breathing potions, but you know what, we're just gonna go with it. There's a guy with a trident. Can I have it, please? Uh-oh. Please don't hit me. Ow! Just give me your trident. No? No trident? Oh, no. It's in my inventory. Look at that. We got one. Okay. All right. I don't like that it's really damaged. Maybe we can find another one and repair it. You have a fishing rod. That's not what I'm looking for. Garbage. Yeah! Look at that. Two. Two tridents. Am I being greedy? Or can I get a third one? Ooh, are these ruins? Is there a chest in here somewhere? I'm not sure that I've got the lung capacity for this, but take a deep breath. Uh oh, uh -oh. not worth it. Ooh, but over here, could there be? Maybe, there's one, look at that. We found a treasure chest, let's go. A treasure map. This is not what I need to be doing right now, but <laughs> let's do it anyway. <gasps> What are the odds that I would be literally standing on the X marks the spot right when we open the map? Okay, let's dig. Oh, there it is. I see it. I see it. I see it. We found the buried treasure. Let's go. A diamond. Okay. The heart of the sea. Rest of this is pretty much junk. Nice thing is I can actually take it all with me because I have an inner chest now. We can throw all this junk in here for now and sort it back out when we get home. Well, that was a completely fun but unnecessary waste of time. Tried it. 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 No, try it. Don't throw it at me. Drop it. Hey, there it is. Whoa, that's a good one. Maybe I keep that one for myself. And that's enough playing around in the ocean for now. On to an abandoned mine shaft where we're going to find a lot of this stuff. I'm going to break as many spider webs as I can find because we need a ton of string to make a bunch of scaffolding for the mob farm. Oh my goodness. I keep hearing spiders crawling around. I'm still trying to figure out where. Oh, hello. <laughs> I was just about to say, I'm still trying to figure out where all these spider sounds are coming from. Maybe we dig down? Could it have been that easy? It was that easy. Oh my, hello. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We must be very careful. I don't want to break it, but if I have to, I'll break it. Man, that's not very many spider webs. Give me more, please. <laughs> okay, that's better. Is this a double spider spawner? Is it? Oh, that's a lot of string. Oh yeah, uh, they're definitely close enough. Okay, add that to the plans. Not sure when we'll get to this, but that's gonna be fun. After several hours of resource gathering, I'm finally on to my last resource, bamboo. And thankfully, this jungle is right next to where I'm going to be building my mob farm. Oh, we're building this thing just in time because I'm down to 21 rockets and my pickaxes are not looking so good. I need some mending. I need some experience points. I need more gunpowder. I need everything. I've marked out this spot in the ocean and I'm gonna build up to probably close to 200 blocks in the air. I just 
just want to make sure that I am way far away from the ocean floor and any caves that might interfere with the efficiency of this farm. So here we are 200 blocks in the air and I've already marked out the spot my armor stand is going to go because you know we're going to use structure for this. And I'm actually going to go ahead and break down three of these scaffolding blocks because the 200th block is where the drop floor is going to go and this is where the collection system is going to go. So I'm going to make a two by two square right here and then we'll leave a gap and make another two by two square here and temporarily I'm going to build out right here and there we go. And then I'm going to take one rail and place it right here here. And since it is facing this direction, I'm going to put a block right there and a block right there. And that will trap our minecart with hopper in place. And we shouldn't ever have to worry about it, I hope. And now that I've done that, I've realized I've made a mistake. So that I don't have to break this later, we need to go ahead and put a hopper facing down right here. And then I can place the rail and the minecart and button it up. Now, any items that land on this block right here will get sucked through the floor if I can hit the floor. Or... There you go. And they won't end up in the minecart with hopper because they will get sucked down into the bottom hopper right here. Eight cobblestone. Nice. Just for good measure, I'm going to go ahead and button this up all the way around. And I'll put a torch right there just in the rare circumstance a baby zombie might spawn in there. We don't want that happening either. The collection system is a minecart with hopper under this floor. And now we need the kill system to take care of the mobs that land here. So a powered rail in each corner should do the trick, followed by an observer reading each of these powered rails. After all four observers are in place, take a solid block of your choice and place it right behind the red dot of each observer. And on top of each of those four blocks, you want to put the pistons facing inward toward the drop floor. And that, my friends, is the entire collection system for the mob farm. This is the most difficult part of the whole thing. So I've got a lever right here ready to start this thing up. So once this powered rail is indeed powered, it will send a signal to the observer and it will just continue on around the circle powering these pistons because this is still in a powered state it's not going to detect that change because there is no change but now when we turn it off check this out infinite looping piston action let's go ahead and box the rest of this in because we want to make sure that no bad guys escape from here and because this generally is going to be where i'm standing i believe instead of a solid block here i'm gonna put a slab i think at this height. That will allow all of the experience points to flow through and I can collect them all. And then I can take this trident that one of our drowned friends so graciously surrendered to us. We're gonna throw it right there at one of these pistons and then we turn it back on and you can see it starts moving that trident around which is going to deal damage to anything that falls in this space. Go ahead and ignore everything I just told you. Well, not quite everything, but I do have one change to make. If I'm remembering correctly, a year ago when I last made this farm. Uh, the powered rails actually made this go a little bit too fast and some of the mobs were getting stuck on top of the pistons. Redstone dust, I believe, slowed it down just enough to let everything through. So keep that in mind. Maybe don't use the powered rails. The next part of this build is this little ring that's 21 blocks above that platform right there. When a zombie or a creeper or a skeleton or whatever falls down 21 blocks, it should make it to where that trident will take them out with one hit. So it should keep the farm running pretty efficiently. Efficiently. The unfortunate part of this is mob farms have to be an odd number and trident killers have to be an even number. So we're going to have to flush the mobs into a two by two hole. And thankfully, it's not too difficult to do. I've built up a wall around what I'm going to call the flushing floor because this is going to be filled with water. But before we put the water down, we need to block this off because it needs to be a free fall. So I'm going to put a sign right here and then another sign right on top of that and then a sign right here and then a sign right here and another sign right there. Now, I'm going to put water on all four of these corners. If a mob happens to land right here, it will get flushed this way. But if it happens to land right here, it would just get stuck right here. So I'm going to take a water source right here in the hole that we've pre dug out and we're going to go boom and it should flush us down. Before I start building the spawn floors, I do want to finish the drop tube and that's going to be made out of campfires. We do need to start from the top because the weird thing about campfires, you can't actually place a campfire on top of a campfire, but you can place a campfire 
fire underneath the campfire. So you kind of have to build this top down. And if you're unfamiliar with this particular farm, you're probably saying, why campfires, Blue Jay? We are using campfires to prevent the spiders from being able to climb back up the drop tube. Just make sure you do this right the first time, because if you mess it up, you got to break it all and start from the top again. And that gets really messy once you have mobs start dropping down. I think last time I built this farm, I blew it up about eight times along with myself before we finally fixed it. Don't be like me. You should only need two of the sides to be campfires in order to prevent the spiders from climbing back up. So you should be good to fill in the other sides with whatever blocks you want. I'm going to use cobblestone because that's what I have to build with. With the drop tube and the collection area complete, it's time to start building the spawn floors. And this is the easiest part of the farm. I'm building up this wall around the flushing floor, one block higher. And this is going to be the bottom of our first spawning floor. I'm going to take coral fans and I'm going to put them all around the perimeter. And this will ensure that nothing gets stuck. Everything should just fall over the edge. Then from here, including this block, I'm going to go out seven. And then this way, I'm going to do that on all four corners and then fill in the gaps. Once filled in, you should have a 19 by 19 square with a giant hole in the middle. And now you're going to see why I needed so much string because every single one of these spaces needs to be filled with a scaffolding block. This is the part that makes me the most nervous. I don't know if I have enough scaffolding to do more than a couple of floors and I want this thing to be at least like six to eight floors high. We're already through one stack and uh, not even a third of the way done with one floor. It's excessive how much scaffolding this takes, but it's a great farm design, so we're still gonna do it. That took over five stacks of scaffolding. How many do I have left? We have enough to do one more floor and start a third floor. This is bad. Setting aside my concerns about not having enough scaffolding for now, let's just finish the floor we're on. I need to build a perimeter all the way around this spawning floor. And once we've gone all the way around once, we need to go around again. You guys are gonna love the big savings I'm about to give you. We're gonna take each of the corner scaffolding blocks out and replace it with a solid block. Oh, a whole whopping four scaffolding back. We're rich. Oh, and I'm forgetting one very important step signs. On top of one of our coral blocks, I'm going to put a sign right here and then a sign right here. And just like we did there, I'm just going to go around the perimeter. Last time I built this farm, I actually only had a three by three hole instead of a five by five and mobs were getting stuck all the time. So I've learned from my mistakes and we've opened it up a little bit wider. So hopefully we don't have that problem again. From here, we're just going to go every single block because unfortunately scaffolding does not work with the infinite water source trick. Wait a minute. Does it now? Hold on. Oh yeah, no, it doesn't work. You have to place water on every single block. With water sources all the way around the perimeter, you can see things are starting to spawn in here that we don't want in here. Bye, buddy! <laughs> um, I guess this is a good uh, test case. Did it work? He's not there anymore. He's gone. Did he survive the fall? Oh, they did indeed. At least one of them did. All three of them survived, except for that llama I just had to eliminate, but that's okay. We need to put the trident in there, so boom. There's the trident, and as long as we don't pick it back up, we can test this out, and you can see how it's gonna work. If we just flip this lever. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, ho, 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 ho. And we've got our experience points and nothing should be on the spawn floor now. Can I get to the hopper underneath that? Boom. There's the leather and there's the leads. It's working. Uh, now I'm hearing some scary things. I'm hearing a zombie. And this works great at night for spawning the bad guys. But we want this to work during the day as well. So I'm going to put a roof directly over the water source block all the way around until this whole area is filled in. If you wanted to stop at one floor, you would just cover over the drop tube. But I would not advise that because it would be a very slow and inefficient farm just having one floor. Build at least two or three. If you're going to build multiple platforms, forms like I am. Coincidentally enough, the roof of that floor is actually the floor of this floor. That's a lot of floors. Every floor is built exactly the same except for the top floor. There's one special thing about it that we'll show you when we get there, but there's no need for you to watch me do this eight times. So now that you know how to build the basics, let me fill in the rest and we'll get to that top floor. Okay, so maybe two platforms isn't half bad. 
it's not quite where I want it to be, but I've only been sitting here for about maybe 10 minutes. Look at this. We've already got 22 string. That would have taken me so much longer to go find another abandoned mine shaft to do that. Oh, we're gonna be just fine. After many, 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 many hours of work, I am done with the last spawn platform, kind of. Before I explain that, take a look at this monstrosity. <laughs> I showed this to my son earlier and he said it looked like the the buzzy nest from Minecraft Dungeons. I couldn't agree more. Unfortunately, we're gonna cover it up, but it will always be the buzzy nest inside. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I've got some glass and I'm gonna cover this up. I'm doing this exactly the same way as I did the previous floors, except for this is not gonna be a solid block, which is not going to block out the light. I do have a solution for that, and there is a method to the madness. In order to increase the rates of this farm, one thing that we can take into consideration is the surface cap and cave cap of the mob spawns. Anything in this farm that is underneath a solid block is considered a cave spawn, but because we're putting transparent blocks here that will be open to the air, this will be considered a surface spawn. But in order for this thing to work during the day, I need to make sure that it's dark enough that mobs can spawn in here. Otherwise, we're only getting full efficiency half the time. From here, I'm gonna build up a wall five blocks tall. Now, I'm gonna put in a floor one block lower than the top of this five tall wall. And then on top of this floor, I'm gonna take two water buckets and I'm going to make an infinite water source straight out of the gate and we're just gonna fill in this entire floor with water and as soon as we hit this corner over here it should start trickling down no don't do that stop 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 it should start trickling down and filling in the entire thing there we go now this entire area is one giant infinite water source I can take water from any spot and it's just water 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 everywhere and now we're gonna get rid of the dirt the point of putting this water here is actually to make it dark enough that mobs can spawn even during the day while still keeping this as a surface spawn because there's technically no solid block above this spawn platform and so we've effectively doubled our rates. Last but not least, I need to mob proof this cobblestone so that nothing can spawn here and that will keep all of our spawns down in the farm where they belong. And with that, the general mob farm is done. Well, kind of. When I have previously built things like this, I generally leave them as giant ugly blocks in the sky. That is not what we are doing any longer. And I'm still a little concerned seeing how much material this took. We're gonna build a giant Yoshi egg around this thing and I'm not sure if I have enough wool, but I'm just gonna stand here and soak up some XP for a minute and get my thoughts together. And we're gonna start building this Yoshi egg. While I'm getting prepared for that, I owe you guys a like challenge. In the previous video, I challenged 350 of you fine people to like the video. And as a reward, I would do a loop over the top of the main end island all the way underneath and all the way back up. So. Oh, that's what we're gonna do. You guys are meeting these challenges with ease. I'm gonna have to start making these harder. So if this video gets 450 likes, I will trap a creeper in the very next episode and keep it as a pet. Now, which way should I jump? That way seems good. Here we go. This might be the worst idea I've ever had. <laughs> oh, under we go. I've got very little room to work with. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. <laughs> I don't know how we survived that, but we did. Challenge completed. Dude, after I've lost several challenges in a row, I deserved that win. And done. My worst fears have been realized. I'm completely out of white wool. And this is all the lime wool I have left. So in order to finish this thing, it's back to the jungle. Thankfully, I've got all this black wool and this blue wool that's left over from that hot air balloon. And I'm not gonna use it for that now because it's done. So I'm just gonna take some white dye and re-dye this wool back to white. And hopefully that will be enough to get us through. If not, it's gonna be shearing time again. And shearing time it was again. 
and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. You know, it's not a mega build until you run out of resources at least a couple of times, and I think I ran out about eight. Is that a brown panda? These things are so rare. At least I think they're rare. I've not seen one in person yet. Hi, buddy. Don't go anywhere. But more importantly, the Yoshi egg is done. Uh, a couple things to note about the Yoshi egg, all right? We got this uh, landing platform sticking out the bottom of the egg. It looks like it's on a pedestal or something. Maybe it's a giant lamp in the sky. No, 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 no. We got plans for this in the next episode. It's worth noting also that we only have one double chest of storage and that's not gonna do. So in the very next episode, we're gonna build a whole storage unit underneath this Yoshi egg and it's gonna be so cool. If you might notice on the side of the egg, there are a bunch of torches. This is not gonna stay this way. This is a temporary fix. And as it is right now, this thing looks really ugly at night. My plan on the next live stream is to go ahead and carpet all of these, but I didn't have time to finish that because, uh, sheep shearing again and again. And we're not gonna go through that again. We did it. Last thing to note is I've left the top of this open. I've thought about putting glass up here and we may still do that. I don't know that I want things falling in there, but holy smokes, look at the inside of this thing. It's huge. Mob farms themselves are not tiny and this mob farm fits comfortably inside this egg i just i can't express how massive this thing is and you know what they say go big or go home and we're definitely not going home if you did enjoy this episode today go ahead and leave a comment and tell me how much you loved the yoshi egg mob farm don't forget to subscribe click that like button turn on the bell notifications all the things you know what to do and we'll see you in the next one